Welcome to Redox Live. I'm glad you can join us. Our online uh, seminar today will be on the fundamentals of uh, calcium nutrition. For those of you who join us on Facebook, it'll be a live event. Uh, those on YouTube will it'll be posted to to YouTube later. I am John Kelly. And Redox is a bionutrient company that focuses on sustainable, sustainable plant nutrition. <clears throat> In our discussion of calcium today, we'll focus on three key functions of calcium. And I, I point out as we dive into this conversation that calcium represents a significant opportunity for most cropping systems where improved quality and yield are desired. Let's talk about the first key function of calcium, and that is uh, its role in the soil for soil structure. The soil has a net negative charge. The soil colloids hold and attract elements with a positive charge, one of those being calcium. And calcium is what is called a divalent cation. It has two positive charges. So it attaches to one soil colloid, attaches to another, it draws them together. This is what we call flocculation, which improves the structure of the soil, which improves the quality and quantity of the micropore space in the soil. This allows for better nutrient water movement, root growth, uh, general conditions for biology as well. What happens when we don't have adequate soil structure, inadequate calcium? This causes deflocculation or dispersion of the soil particles. <clears throat> this locks up the soil, severely limits water and air move movement as well as root growth, creates conditions which are not satisfactory for soil health, for beneficial microorganisms in the soil, and ultimately impairs the potential for uh, plant yield. On the, in, on the opposite side is when we have great soil structure, we have these conditions where we can uh, get closer to achieving the genetic potential of, of the crops we're dealing with. The second key role, which is indispensable related to calcium, is internally in the plant for cell wall structure and the relative strength of those cells. As cells develop, calcium becomes a key component of those cell walls. And the cells, of course, contain key organelles, key contents that are vital to the relative strength of that plant. There's, there's no substitute for calcium in this, in this role. In addition, there are other elements that are closely tied to uh, calcium uptake and utilization in the plant. Boron is one of those. Another is uh, silicon. Now, silicon is available to the plant in what we refer to as the in the uh, as monosilicic acid. It's one of the most common elements in the earth's crust. However, in uh, weathered soils and soils that have been farmed for a long time, silicon uh, can sometimes be a, a limiting factor. It turns out that calcium and silicon play a key role together in the formation of, of strong cell walls. In this graphic that we're looking at, we see some of the downsides of having in, inadequate calcium and silicon in the plant. And that renders the plant much more susceptible to stress. On the flip side, a strong plant with these strong cells is resistant to many stress factors, as well as enabling that plant to achieve better uh, yield and quality potential. Another key component of calcium relates to, relates to what we refer to as abiotic stress defense. Abiotic stress are the non-living factors that implant, influence the, the plant. And here we have some examples such as heat, uh, overwatering, nutri nutritional imbalance. All of these factors are a greater uh, 
problem or a potential for greater problem if we have mediocre or weak calcium nutrition. The third role of calcium is often overlooked. And it relates to root growth, specifically root tip growth. In the soil, the root um, must exert a great deal of pressure uh, to grow. In fact, a root tip can exert up to about 300 pounds per square inch. However, that root tip relies on ionic plant available calcium in order to achieve this. And if, if this uh, if there are imbalances or an un calcium is not available, this root will simply quit growing. So very important. Just a reminder that there are three key mechanisms for nutrient uptake. The first is root interception, wherein the root grows to the nutrient. That's one of the means whereby calcium is taken up. The sec second is mass flow, whereby transpiration as the plant transpires, pulls up water and nutrients to the soil, that's another means that calcium, that how calcium is taken up in the plant. And just a, a quick overview of the different methods that various nutrients are taken up into the plant. Now, how do we determine where, if a crop has a, um, a calcium opportunity? One of the first things to do is, is to get a, a good soil report. Almost any soil report will give us some strong, strong indications as, as to whether there might be uh, some opportunities. This uh, report we're looking at here combines two types of tests. On the left side, you're looking at a more of a traditional chemical extraction, an effort to look at the the, the bulk quantity of, of any given element in the soil. And in this case, as we look to the bar graph at the bottom, we see that uh, based on a very large database, this soil happens to have um, about average levels of, of total calcium in the soil. On the right-hand side of this report, we have utilized a separate soil test called a soluble paste extraction, wherein under vacuum and water, nutrients were pulled out of, uh, by the laboratory and they analyze these. In this case, we have um, very far from the optimum amount of soluble calcium under these conditions. This, so a soil test can be a, a, a strong indication where there might be some opportunities. Well, then how do we determine um, when and where, what types of materials, what to utilize. Well, I'd suggest that there are six key factors to consider. Uh, the first is solubility. Uh, calcium cannot be of, of benefit, ultimately, until it's uh, an ion that by itself in plant available form. Now, this solubility factor um, relates to everything except for calcium carbonate or lime. Calcium carbonate we, we utilize to react with hydrogen in the soil whereby calcium is released in that process. The second is calcium is going to come attached to some sort of anion, because positive and negative charge together. The consideration there is what is the anion? Is it gonna be beneficial? Uh, is it going to help or is it going to hurt? What, what's the net effect? The third is cost per unit, but then more importantly, cost per application. At times, the lowest cost per unit material may not be the lowest cost per application. The fifth consideration is bioavailability. How readily can we get that calcium into the plant? And then last but not least, what's the relative impact on plant metabolism. And with all of this consideration, again, we want to go to that soil test because that soil test will tell us if there's an opportunity to solubilize existing calcium in the soil or to complement with, with inputs. So with these uh, key factors, key criteria for calcium inputs, what, what, is, what are we looking for? Calcium in its ionic form is chemical annotation CA with two plus. 
um, two pluses is highly reactive. It, it's highly attracted to elements with a negative charge. So the graphic on the left shows where we, we're, we're getting free calcium, but a lot of it's being tied up before we get into the plant. Right-hand side, we're seeing where what we really want to do is deliver that to the plant. And with this in mind, we've put together this matrix that just kind of gives us an overall overview of some commonly used calcium inputs. We looked at the various criteria. Our objective today is not to go into these in depth, but it's, it's helpful to understand that some inputs are fantastic under certain circumstances and others not. But understanding where those opportunities lie uh, is, involves gathering information. As, as we close, I'd like to discuss two key redox technologies. The one is called, the first is called main state calcium. Main state calcium is a reacted nutrient product. It's high in calcium. It's 20% calcium. Now, this product starts off as calcium carbonate. Then we react it. We um, manufacture in a process called microencapsulation, where we react with a surfactant, highly plant available um, from a nutrition standpoint. The second material is a very innovative product called Mainstay SI. This is a reacted nutrient product that contains calcium and plant available silicon. This product can be used as a foliar or application through the soil as well. And again, it delivers that, that silicon, which can often be a limiting factor in calcium uptake. With that, um, you're more than welcome to submit your questions uh, to Redox. We're happy to answer those. Um, thank you very much.